Joma Sison, founding chairman of the Communist Party of the Philippines, passed away last Friday at the age of 83. CPP Chief Information Officer Marco Balbuena announced Sison's passing after two weeks of hospital confinement. Joma Sison was a constant critic of the Marcos dictatorship and was a key leader in the modern communist movement in the Philippines. He was imprisoned from 1977 to 1986 by former President Ferdinand Marcos Sr. Since the early 90s, Sison had been staying in the Netherlands as a recognized political refugee. Season's recent death drew mixed reactions from government agencies and political personalities. Vice President Sara Duterte only had a few words for a season. She said, may God have mercy on his soul. Meanwhile, AFP spokesperson Colonel Medel Aguilar believes that season's death has weakened the Communist Party and thus provides the armed forces an excellent chance to engage their leaders. The National Defense Department, meanwhile, called Season the greatest stumbling block to peace in the Philippines. <clears throat> and with his death, the Philippines can supposedly, quote, give peace a chance. But for Gabriela Partidist and the Makabayan bloc, truly giving peace a chance means resuming peace talks with the CPP, NPA, NDF. The Makabayan bloc also called on government to implement genuine social, economic, and political reform. Meanwhile, the ntf -LCAC, or the National Task Force to End Local Communist Armed Conflict, urged members of the CPP to turn their backs on their party. What's next for the CPP and the peace process after Joma Sison's death? To discuss this, we have National Democratic Front of the Philippines member Luis Halandoni joining us via Zoom. Good evening. Welcome to The Big Story, Mr. Halandoni. Good evening sa inyong lahat and uh, to all your listeners. Mm. Good evening. Magandang gabi po. <clears throat> so, sa tingin niyo po, what will, be, po sa inyong lahat. What, what will be the legacy of, of Joma and what will be the impact of his death on the peace process here in the Philippines? The legacy of uh, Joma Sison is very rich in struggle and organization and fighting for the rights of the Filipino people. He was a big factor in the peace negotiations with the government of the Republic of the Philippines. Under the presidency of President Ramos, 10 agreements were made. Among them, the most important are the Hague Joint Declaration, which states that there is parity between the two parties and there is no capitulation, no surrender. This agreement was approved by President Ramos and also the principal of the National Democratic Front. Then followed the Comprehensive Agreement on Respect for Human Rights and International Humanitarian Law, or CARIL, in 1998, also under the term of President Ramos. So these agreements are very important and could be used to proceed with the peace negotiations. The National Democratic Front is open to peace negotiations with the new Marcos II regime if there is any sign of serious peace negotiations. So the National Democratic Front has kept its negotiating panel with mm. Julie Season as the interim head and Connie Ledesma and Asterio Palima as members. Mm. So I am the also a serious advisor, a se senior advisor of the peace negotiating panel. Uh, we hope that there will be such peace negotiations as being uh, uh, suggested by peace organizations like the PEPP, the Philippine Ecumenical Peace Platform. Yes, but Mr. Mr. Alandoni, you, you mentioned nga po, uh, by some organizations at the same time earlier on, you said if there is any signal from the, uh, from the current government of the Marcos um, administration. My question, sir, what has been 
the expression and communications and lines from the Marcos administration currently, the, both in terms of when they started the administration as well as uh, on the passing of uh, Joma Sison. Are there any, any indications of the direction that the Marcos administration will take um, in the peace process with the Communist Party? There is so far, unfortunately, no indication from the Marcos government that they would like to have peace negotiations. Although the third party facilitator, the Norwegian government, has been active in trying to have something moving on the peace negotiations. All right, going back to Jose Maria Sison, is there a possibility that he will be buried here in the Philippines? And what are the timelines for that? Uh, his remains will still re be here in Utrecht, the Netherlands. That is the will of Julie Sison, his wife and comrade. And there will be uh, a wake now and also commemorations for Joma Sison. He is alive in spirit and inspiration to the movement in the Philippines and abroad. There have been many uh, notices of uh, support and solidarity coming from different organizations abroad and, of course, in the Philippines. Now, we will see uh, what will happen next is that there will be a big honor for Kajoma from the different NPA units throughout the country. And still the NPA and the revolutionary forces are still determined to continue the revolutionary struggle. All right. We are sorry for your loss and uh, thank you for joining us tonight. That was uh, NDFP's Luis Halandoni.